Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to Commute Talk. It's a gray and rainy day here on the highway in Sweden. And it's nothing out of the ordinary, though, so we can handle it. Um, today, user123 writes in um, from the IRC channel asking about um, how to have fun with programming once you get past the beginner stage and now you have a job and you're doing CRUD apps all day. Um, how do you still have fun with programming at that point? And he also asks about hacker rank and leak code and websites like that where you do sort of these uh, practice programming practice problems uh, to hone your skills. Like how necessary are those? Do you need to do those? Um, so thank you, Mr. One Two Three, for the questions. Um, I guess we can start with um, like these lead code and hacker rank things. Um, you definitely don't need to do those. Uh, I never do those things, and I tend to do okay anyway. Um, I just don't find them fun or interesting. Uh, and I don't think that they're necessary, but if you like doing those type of problems, or you just enjoy it, then obviously it's a perfectly fine thing to do, but you shouldn't feel forced to do it, or like you have to, because you really don't. Now, I know a lot of people um, they think they need to do these things to sort of prepare for programming interviews because it is true that the programming job interviews have sort of become this weird thing where people are tested on their ability to memorize uh, like these uh, cheeky programming um, problems. <laughs> um, but it is my belief from, both from experience as an interviewer and as an interviewee, that um, most of the problems that come up in these types of interviews can be solved from first principles by any competent programmer, uh, as long as he can manage his or her um, nerves. Um, and certainly when I interview someone for a job, I, uh, I also ask them to do some programming and I just wanna see if they can program, right? And I always ask questions that uh, any competent programmer who's been programming very recently um, can solve. And I, I guess it's, it's different in different places, right? Like I know some places they ask questions which are uh, sort of designed to make the interviewer feel good about himself uh, or to make someone feel smarter than you. And that's obviously silly um, if you're interviewing people and doing that, what are you doing? <laughs> but anyway, um, so I, I, I do think, I do see that there's some amount of pressure that people feel uh, to do lead code and hacker rank and stuff like that. But in my opinion, you're much better off just programming a lot and um, programming things that are outside of your comfort zone, outside of your knowledge zone, uh, challenging yourself to do new things that you don't know how to do yet. Uh, if you are always doing that, then you don't need to solve these little pretend puzzles uh, just to get better. You can get better by actually doing the thing. Um, but everybody's different, and this is just my personal opinion, and this is what I do for myself, but you might be different. And if you enjoy like these little self-contained programming puzzles, then by all means do them. Uh, but I, I do want to tell anyone who feels like they don't enjoy it and they're just doing it because they feel they have to, that there are other ways to improve your skills, right? And I guess that kind of brings us to the first question, how to have fun with programming um, once you get past the beginner stage and now you're in a corporate job um, doing uh, Mr. Manager's CRUD apps and um, you don't feel like you're having fun with programming anymore so much. Now, this is a very, very typical thing. And I've been in that situation myself uh, multiple times um, for long times. And the thing that helped me was to just realize that I need to separate uh, work programming and personal programming. And this took me years to realize, like over a decade, that um, programming at work is great. Getting paid to do programming for a living, fantastic. It is great, but it does not replace personal programming. 
Um, now, I love computers. I love programming. But I don't love programming uh, what somebody else tells me to do at work. That's just a job. And it is so common and so easy to get into this trap where you identify with your job and uh, you make your life about your job. And I think a lot of us, um, certainly myself, but I think a lot of programmers, we sort of grew up um, learning programming for free because it was so fun and interesting to us. And we didn't make, we didn't need to put any effort into um, learning about it because we were, we were just like filled to the brim with curiosity about it anyway. And now that we grew up and we can get jobs doing programming, um, a lot of us, I've talked to many people who say that they feel like it's almost like it's not real. It's like I shouldn't have this job because I didn't, I didn't earn this job. I'm just doing the thing that I like. And that sort of mentality, it's a bit funny, but like it can, it can trick you into, um, into misunderstanding your relationship with your employer. And I know that a lot of, a lot of people learn programming uh, from school. Uh, or they learn it later in life, and there's nothing wrong with that, but I, speak, I can only speak from personal experience, right? So I definitely grew up uh, learning programming just because I wanted to, and I had a problem for a long time uh, understanding my relationship with my employers. And the relationship with your employer is that you are selling them your time and your skills in exchange for money. and it's perfectly fine to do that. Just sell your time to your employer, but don't give them your, uh, your personal time for free, right? And that's where a lot of people make the mistake, and that's where I've been making mistakes for many years. And the thing that helped me get out of that was, honestly, it was to quit my job and <laughs> get away from the um, Bay Area tech industry. And it took me almost two years before I started poking around with my personal projects after I had left uh, and sort of taking them seriously. And, or maybe not two years, but it took, it took over a year. And when I was working at Apple, I always felt like working on WebKit, working on Safari, it was so awesome. Uh, I could reach so many users and make an impact and the work I did really mattered, you know? And I would just tell myself this, and it's fine to not have a hobby, it's fine to not do personal projects because my work is so important. And I think, I think this is something that we can all find ourselves saying internally to soothe ourselves. And it's, it's not really healthy, uh, and you're missing out on something, so what you want to do instead is to separate work programming and personal programming. So your work programming is what you do at your job. Your personal programming is where you pursue your curiosity, right? You, you indulge your, um, your interest in programming. And I think if you're on this channel, then you probably love programming too, uh, just like I do. And you probably have something in your heart that just beats for the machines. And we love them, and we're curious about them, and we have this endless curiosity that we can tap into um, if we set ourselves up for it. But it's very easy to, to um, sort of set that aside, and it will start to wither, and that's really sad. So have a personal project, step number one. Um, whatever it is, doesn't matter, just something that you're curious about and a place where you can exercise uh, your curiosities and you have full autonomy to do anything you want in any way that you want. And the second step is to try to do something with other people uh, in software as well. Because collaborating with other people will expose you to new ideas, new ways of thinking, um, and just new approaches to things you already know. Uh, and the open source community is a fantastic playground for that stuff. Like you can go out and if you're like um, a Linux user or a BSD user or whatever user, 
if you're using an open source operating system or an open source software of any kind on your computer and you have some software that you really like, uh, then you could go and work on that software, whatever it is. Like you love uh, the GNOME desktop, you could work on that. You love the Firefox browser, you could work on that. You love your media player, uh, you love whatever. As long as it's open source, you could work on it. And I realized this when I was in my 20s that I really loved KDE, uh, especially the, the KDE 3 series. Uh, later, seri later releases I'm not so fond of, but the 3 series was amazing. And I was using it every day. And somehow one day I realized I could work on it. So I started doing that. And just uh, I was exposed to so much awesome stuff in starting to, um, to learn about that and starting to contribute to it. And I got to interact with so many different people uh, who knew so many different things. And I saw so many cool programming patterns and stuff. And it totally changed the way that I think about software, the way that I approach programming, everything, everything changed for me uh, from starting to work on KDE. And I really just picked it because I was using it all the time anyway, and I, I loved using it, so why not help out and work on it? Um, so that's something that really worked for me. Now, I think that's really the, the, um, the perfect couple of uh, personal programming things is the personal project where you have 100% autonomy, you do whatever you want in whatever way you like, and then the uh, collaboration project where you work together with others so that you see how other people do things and you just get that programmer interaction thing. Because you can get programmer interaction at work, but it's not really the same as um, trying to collaborate with someone on something you both care about but neither of you really have to do. Just that. That feeling of, of doing something just because you want to, um, sharing that with other programmers is amazing, and it's so educational, not just um, for your programming skills, but for your, uh, you know, your soft skills as well. And I know that a lot of people feel like soft skills are not so important, and maybe they are, maybe they aren't, but uh, if, you can, if you work on software together with other people, you'll get some soft skill training for free and it won't cost you anything and it won't even be that difficult. And um, that's not gonna hurt you. That'll be a good thing, I promise. So yeah, <laughs> I guess, I guess if you think back on, on when you were a proper beginner, like when you knew very little and you were just so excited about programming and now you think that you're out of the beginner stage and it's not so much fun anymore, but if the moment you engage with other people, especially if you engage with other people who know way more than you do, or if they know something, some particular thing that you know nothing about, then you'll begin to realize that you're still a beginner, just not in the um, super duper beginner in everything category, but you're a beginner in uh, a whole million intermediate categories instead. And I've been experiencing this just in the last few days, starting to work on a JavaScript engine. Like, I've never made um, an AST before. Uh, I've never made an interpreter of an AST. I've never made, built a garbage collector. And I'm just kind of working these things out and trying to show you the process as I go. And I'm a beginner in these areas, and it's really fun to learn. And... Um, and I'm doing it just because I want to do it, and it's really fun. <clears throat> and that's the thing that I guess I want you to try as well, since you're asking me. Uh, I don't want to tell anyone how to live their life, but since you ask, I think separate work and personal programming. And in personal programming, my recommendation is to do a personal, personal project where you control everything, and a collaborative project where you work together with other people. Um, now, in my case, those two categories kind of blend together right now because I work on a personal project that I started, but other people have come into it, and uh, it's becoming more and more collaborative as we go. Um, obviously, I still have the majority control, and I make most of the code still, but um, maybe that'll change, and wouldn't that be nice? 
we'll see. Anyways, uh, <laughs> I hope that answers your question, user123, um, and I hope I made sense, I hope I didn't talk for too long, or babble, I don't know, I lost track of time there a little bit, but I hope everybody's having a decent Tuesday, and let's try to make it the best Tuesday that we can with the time that we have and then go home and work on something that we are curious about. Nobody tells us to do it. We just do it because we're curious. All right. See you guys next time. Bye.